All right, hey VC, I'm Jamie. Welcome back. We are back with another video and a happy new year. I did manage to stay up till midnight last night, so for me that is fairly rare. And I got a great idea from a British broadcaster, Danny Baker. Uh, he was recently interviewed and featured on the YouTube channel uh, Word in Your Ear or Word in Your Attic. And it's hosted by two music writers who often uh, interview other writers, broadcasters, musicians, that sort of thing. But uh, what Danny Baker often does is he kind of opens up the uh, door or window and uh, sends the old year packing and welcome in the new year, that sort of thing. So I thought, that's a great idea for 2020. So I opened up the, uh, the door last night at the stroke of midnight and took a broom and kind of, you know, brushed, metaphorically brushed out the old year and welcomed in uh, 2021. So I thought that was a great idea. And another great idea is a already a, a vital community uh, New Year's thread uh, started by Chris Profi of Musically Obsessed and uh, talking about the year 2021. If you add the numbers together, you get the number five. So spotlight the fifth album from an artist or band. So I thought I'd uh, spotlight Max Webster and the album Universal Juveniles that came out in 1980 uh, featuring Kim Mitchell and and uh, you're likely familiar with Kim Mitchell with uh, Patio Lanterns, Go For Soda, more his solo career. Uh, the band Max Webster, this was their fifth and final studio album. The band would break up shortly after this album was released. They did go out on tour, but this came out in 1980 and they broke up by 1981. Now, uh, when this album came out, Terry Watkinson, uh, keyboardist, also shared uh, vocals and some songwriting uh, as well, had already left the band, so that left them with Kim Mitchell, along with Gary McCracken on drums and David Miles on bass. After this album was released, David Miles then left the band, and so then for the subsequent tour, uh, bringing in just other guest musicians to kind of fill out the band and sort of complete the tour sort of thing. Uh, th this album is definitely noted for one track in particular, the song Battle Scar, which features the members of Max Webster and the members of Russ together for one song uh, lead vocals with Kim Mitchell and Getty Lee this still gets a lot of that song still gets a lot of radio play on classic rock uh, stations a great track uh, Max Webster often opened for Rush and Rush were big fans of the band so they got together for one one song and uh, it's a great great track and uh, it's interesting that Terry uh, uh, Terry Watkinson uh, keyboardist is featured on that uh, song so they recorded that song before Terry had left the band so it's the the, the full Max Webster lineup and the full Rush lineup on that particular track. Uh, the rest, it's all uh, Kim Mitchell uh, lead vocals. Um, it's, it's got some great tracks on it. Uh, it's still a, a favorite of mine from the uh, Max Webster uh, catalog. Uh, this was produced by Jack Richardson. Uh, Jack Richardson most noted for his work with the Guess Who, but he also produced uh, Bob Seger's Night Moves and co-produced a couple of Alice Cooper albums. <laughs> What's also interesting about uh, this Max Webster album is that it, this is the only Max Webster album not to feature any songs with Moon in the title. On their previous four studio albums, they had Coming Off the Moon, uh, In Context of the Moon, Moon Voices, and uh, Beyond the Moon, not in that particular order. But uh, they always had a song, for whatever reason, that had Moon in the title. I don't know if that was on purpose or whatever, but for this album, uh, no songs with Moon in the title. And when this uh, was released on CD, uh, they would release all the Max Webster albums with uh, featuring Kim Mitchell because his solo career was quite big at the time. But... Uh, uh, subsequently now for the new uh, vinyl issues they haven't done that this is an og copy but it's uh, it does say in the corner here uh, that it, it's it's an anthem reissue this is on the anthem label but they just uh, changed the number here because uh, this still has the old number here and there's no like barcode or anything like that so this one uh, does feature uh, the original uh, insert which is a lot of fun with all of the lyrics and here is the uh, song battle scar uh, with the lyrics and again the complete lineup for both bands and that's kind of a character of uh, Kim Mitchell. Uh, lyrics written by a fellow by, who went by the name of Pine de Bois, uh, who was uh, the main lyricist, kind of like the Bernie Toppin of Elton John. Um, he was the main lyricist for the band, and there's a Gary McCracken on drums. Even uh, There's not even a picture of uh, David Miles uh, technically featured uh, on this album uh, as well, because he left shortly after the album was released. So again, for 1980, uh, their final studio album, Kim Mitchell would go on to a very successful uh, solo career in Canada, but still, uh, still a favorite. Again, not the best of covers. Uh, Max Webster really not noted for their great covers, but still a pretty solid album. 
uh, overall that rocks uh, pretty well. And again, featuring the song Battle Scar with Max Webster and Rush for that alone. It is absolutely terrific. This album did go gold uh, in Canada. So yeah, that's going to uh, wrap it up for, for this one. Again, a great idea. Take the fifth album uh, from an artist or band and spotlight it for a, a VC New Year's thread uh, started by Chris Profi, Musically Obsessed. So I do have an unboxing that's uh, going to be coming your way uh, fairly shortly. I think a, a fairly big one. So uh, stay tuned for that. And again, Happy New Year to you and yours. Do take care. Bye-bye.